This is Democracy Now!, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to look at this breaking news, President Trump and the First Lady testing positive for COVID-19, announcing they'll be quarantined for the next 14 days, canceling his campaign events. We end today's show looking at how the development will impact the presidential race. We're going to start with Naomi Klein, senior correspondent at The Intercept, a professor at Rutgers University, executive producer of a new short video titled A Message from the Future Two: The Years of Repair. Her latest book out now, in paperback, On Fire, The Burning Case for a Green New Deal. Naomi, I assume you went to sleep not knowing this news, and you wake up looking down from British Columbia, and you see what has taken place. Um, you cover leaders around the world. We know that President Bolsonaro tested positive for COVID-19. At least he announced something like three times. And then you have yeah. Boris Johnson, the prime minister of Britain, who said both of them, like Trump, who have so seriously downplayed the pandemic, uh, risking uh, not clear how many lives. Um, Boris Johnson, the prime minister, said he was going to work through this. He ended up in the intensive care unit. Namely, if you can talk about this link of the denial of the pandemic to authoritarian leaders. Sure. Well, um, Amy, it's good to be with you. Um, absolutely. I, when you look at these figures, Trump, uh, uh, Bolsonaro, uh, Johnson, you know, these are the figures who believe that they can bully this virus, and they believe they can bully science in all kinds of ways. But of course, the pandemic doesn't bend to their will. And so they've all been under this sort of reality avalanche. I mean, Trump is a reality television star. He's used to being able to cut and paste reality to his liking. And ever since this pandemic um, began and his denials made it so much worse and his bullying of scientists made it so much worse, he has finally confronted uh, some physical reality that he can't bully in the same way that he frankly bullies you know, the stock market and, 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 and has a lot of success bullying reality, but there's some reality that, that, that doesn't confirm, doesn't conform. Um, you know, as you know, Amy, I, I also have spent a lot of my um, my, my writing career uh, researching moments of shock um, and how they are exploited by the powerful. Uh, um, you know, that's the, the thesis behind the shock doctrine. Um, and so I find myself thinking a lot about that this morning, because as we speak, there is no doubt uh, that Trump is meeting with his advisors and has been uh, since they knew about this, uh, since they knew about Hope Hicks trying to figure out how to exploit this, um, including, I, I, I'm afraid, using it as an excuse uh, to, to do what they have been trying to do relentlessly, which is discredit elections that Trump is terrified he is going to lose. So we, you know, as we think about what this means, we need to be prepared for uh, the president using the fact that he's having to cancel uh, campaign events for two weeks to try to further delegitimize elections that he very likely will lose. Um, I think we need to remember that this president has been campaigning for re-election since the day after he was inaugurated and since he started circulating false photographs of uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 so the rallies that supposedly greeted him. Um, he has had plenty of time to campaign. He has done nothing but campaign, campaign for re-election since he became president. Um, so I think that, you know, we're seeing a lot of Democrats sending thoughts and prayers uh, this morning. Um, you know, I really think what we should see Trump getting COVID as the epidemiological equivalent of a mass shooting where the shooter opens fire on the crowd and then turns the gun on himself. This is not a tragic accident. It is a crime scene and should be treated as such. Coming back to those leaders you mentioned, um, you know, I think that Trump, the reckless endangering of the country, but also himself, right, uh, is a result of the fact that he truly believes <laughs> You know, I think he believes in white supremacy, to be honest with you. Ilhan Omar tweeted that yesterday that the president is a white supremacist. I think she's right. 
I, he talks about his good genes all the time in this kind of coded language. I believe he actually um, has such faith in his own genetic supremacy that he has engaged in this reckless behavior despite all of the health risks that we have heard from your medical experts earlier in the show because he believes himself to be supreme. And, um, you know, he is not. He is fallible. He is mortal. 